Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout 76 video. Wow, have we got some humongous news today. So we kind of knew this was going to be happening. Um, we'd had teasers, we basically knew, but uh, now it's actually happening. Fallout 76 is getting a map expansion. And it's getting it, well, the public test server is getting it, today which is really, really cool. So yes, Bethesda have literally in the last few minutes announced that the public test server is now available to download for the next round of testing. And we will be getting a look at Skyline Valley, the uh, next update and the new area coming to 76. Hopefully, <laughs> all things being equal, at the end of June. So yeah, that should be really, really cool. So I don't have any footage today, um, as the test server is, as I'm speaking, not yet open. But uh, I am in the process of downloading up the update, and I will be bringing you some footage as soon as I possibly can. And um, we will see if we do some more stuff as well. But yeah, I'm going to be all over this because I'm very excited. Potentially, don't want to jinx anything, probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway. Potentially, a new map update could be the most significant expansion, especially when you couple it with the um, impact of the series in the last week or so. Could be the most significant thing to happen to 76 since uh, Wastelanders at the beginning of 2020. Potentially. So, uh, here's hoping. Yeah, I'm going to be all over this when I get a chance. So, for now, we'll have a look at the inside of the vault blog post and uh, see the text of what's going on, because there's, there's some nuance to this. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, get into actually seeing it as soon as reasonably possible, probably tomorrow for footage. But uh, yeah, definitely keep it here. So uh, you know, subs, notification bells, all that good stuff. And let's have a look at this thing. Oh, I'm excited. So yeah, the uh, same splash screen we've seen before. Very, very cool. Um, a fantastic new event. There'll be a public event that we'll have a look at. Reference to Vault 63, which is down at the bottom of the ash heap. So presumably connecting through in some way should be interesting yeah uh, Shenandoah National Park there we go so they're calling it Skyline Valley but obviously we know what it relates to Shenandoah there welcome to Inside the Vault this week we have some exciting news to share about our next major update which expands our map deep into the wooded heartland of Skyline Valley so with the forest being my favorite region wooded definitely appeals to me um one of the other areas that is very popular with camp builders like myself is the Maya, so there's potentials for things like the cool lighting effects and stuff there to be involved in a, their own way here. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when we get to jump into this later. So starting today, Vault Dwellers on Steam will be able to begin testing this new update on our public test server, PTS, and providing feedback on the, their experience in our community Discord, which you can stay up to date with all of the 76 news there as well. So yeah. Um, I will link this post down below, so if you want to have a, a gander yourself and follow those links through to the Discord and stuff, you can. Always uh, the fastest way to keep up to date with stuff. Read on to learn more about what's being tested. So, I'm going to do a quick caveat, obviously they're going to mention this later, but um, the PTS, the way that works is if you have Fallout 76 on PC through Steam, and only through Steam, you can download the public test server uh, for free. It's um, included in the base purchase of the game through Steam. And then it's effectively a second copy of the game on your computer, so bear that in mind, that you can then play with the um, test version that is being tested at whatever point in time it is. Assuming, of course, that there is a test version currently live, um, which obviously there soon will be. So yeah, um, via Steam on PC only. Everybody else is going to have to wait for the launch. Um, or, you know, follow it on YouTube. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> so, what we got? The PTS for Skyline Valley update will happen in two parts. Part 1 launches this afternoon will allow you to get acquainted with the new region, participate in a new public event, and stake your claim on the land by placing down camps. So this has been one of the questions regarding the new areas that were added in the past, i.e. the pit and Atlantic City, whether or not camps and stuff would be buildable there, and the, obviously the answer in the past has been no. This time it's a resounding yes, we've got new places to build camps! Hype. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Part 2 that will release in May will introduce you to an all new main quest line. Now I will probably talk a bit about that, but I probably won't play through it just because that's the wrong kind of spoiler, if that makes sense. Um, I don't mind bringing coverage and stuff like that and looking at stuff, but I don't want to kind of spoil story elements until it launches alongside everybody else when I will play through it on stream. So um, yeah, that's where my current position on that is. But yeah, that'll be mid-May for part 2. So, new public event that you will be testing is called Dangerous Pastimes. 
In this event, you will help thrill thrill seeking storm chasers mm. get the best picture of a storm by protecting them from the elements, the lost, and nearby charged creatures. So, the lost, that's um, a thing. We don't know what they are yet, but I guess we're going to be finding out very soon. I assume this new uh, exploring the place and building camps is also going to include new creatures, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that will be the case because of what we'll be reading in a minute. But yeah, very, very cool. I assume everything will be in place except the storyline, basically. So, to help you plan around what to test, we've prepared a special outline of what events will be happening throughout the PTS period, basically an overview of their plan for the testing period. So, public event testing schedule. Dates subject to change. Of course, they always are. Um, April 18th, that'll be today. Once the PTS is open, later on today, the new public event, Dangerous Pastimes, will be running every 20 minutes. So, public events, as it always is, they run top of the hour, 20 past and 22. Um, i.e. every 20 minutes. So, basically, in this case, on the PTS, the only public event they'll be running is this shiny new one. Because, you know, that's what they want to test. So, on April 27th, so that is 10 days, a week and a half, Dangerous Pastimes will be replaced by Fashion Act as we test some changes around the event. Primarily, the changes will be focused on the performance and pacing of the event, which is not uh, terribly exciting, but, you know, better performance and pacing doesn't hurt. And it'll be running at the top of the hour. Um, so only once an hour. That begs the question what's happening the rest of the time, but okay. So yeah, a little bit of an update to uh, Fashion Act, which is nice to have. And uh, they're just taking the opportunity to test it for um, only a few days. Seven, yeah, only a couple of days. So they only wants to test Fashion Act to make sure it's stable for a couple of days. Okay, that's fine. On April the 29th, so that'll be two weeks from now, Dangerous Pastimes will return and replace Fashion Act, presumably again with the every 20 minutes thing. However, along with testing the public events, we specifically request that you nuke the region whilst playing. Maybe something will happen. Maybe nothing. Probably nothing, right? So there's a, a, a nuke component, but whether or not this is going to happen the first time around, I'm guessing not. Um, it will probably only happen um, once the, the specific time they want to test it, so it's all two weeks from now. Otherwise, it probably won't change in the first half. Probably. But they want to test out the nuked version of the event, which sounds like there is a nuked version, um, later on down the line at the end of April. So very, very cool. Um, it also reiterates that... Um, in order for nukes to launch from Appalachia and to hit the map, I would assume it is literally an extension of the existing map. So we'll have to see what the reality of that is very, very soon. But um, it looks like there'll be no passing through to another zone as per with the pit or with um, Atlantic City. It'll, you'll be in the same place. It's Appalachia, but a bit more from the sound of it. As I say, we'll get more details on that very, very soon. So keep an eye on Discord for updates as to when all of these update these events are active and for feedback threads where you can share your thoughts and report your issues. So yeah, they obviously want feedback because that's the point of testing it. So combat rebalance work. This is... Uh, I'm curious about this, but uh, something else that will be coming along with this update. Starting with the Skyline Valley update. Starting there, but presumably not ending. We are beginning a series of combat updates that are aimed to improve your experience. Our goal is for these changes to have a positive effect on combat throughout the game. Yeah, no surprises there, you generally try and make improvements, not go backwards. These will be tested during the PTS. To help set expectations, we expect these changes to take effect in a variety of places, i.e. weapons and creatures and the like, across multiple patches. So this will not be one big change, it will be a series of smaller changes moving hopefully forward over time. So to start things off, they're adjusting creatures first. So specifically, anglers, cave crickets, floaters, gulpers, mutant hounds, and protectrons. There is no information here on how they're changing them, just that they are changing them. Um, so I don't know, it'll be, it will be interesting to see what they do with that. And we'll have to keep an eye out when we encounter them. Obviously, this is PTS first, and will the first wave of changes will arrive with the Skyline Valley update probably at the end of June. That's where it's currently scheduled, or seems to be. Um, and obviously, subsequent updates will go on down the line. So I imagine that one at the end of June will be this, plus potentially a few other bits and pieces as well that will be added and tested and tweaked and stuff over the course of uh, the next what one to two and a bit months. So we've also improved how we calculate the falloff for weapon damage at range. So yeah, once you're beyond the effective range of your weapon, damage drops off. 
We expect this to smooth out the fall off damage for weapons that historically lost most of their damage right away. All ranged weapons benefit from this, but it should be most visible with shotguns and pipe guns, as well as when fighting larger creatures such as death claws. So most obvious with shotguns and pipe guns, okay, fine. But basically all weapons should not, the damage should not drop off as rapidly from the sound of this. Um, that seems to be what they're saying. Obviously most weapons they have whatever their effective range is, pick 100 meters out of thin air, and then beyond that damage will decrease the further away beyond that point that the enemy gets. Um, apparently it was dropping off way too quickly and most obviously with shotguns and pipe guns. Yeah, cool. Um, Positive steps in the right direction. It's nice to see a refresh to the combat system. It's uh, welcome, I think is what I'm going to go with welcome. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do. So how to participate in the PGS. As I say, if you own Fallout 76 on Steam, you can download the public test server. It's effectively a second copy of the game, uh, but it has the unique test build on it. You then log in and you can test things. Progress does not carry over from the PTS to the main game. Um, and when you log into the PTS, you will get a snapshotted duplicate of your characters, which is to say probably like now-ish or maybe in the last couple of days, they will have gone, OK, duplicate everybody on Steam's characters and copy them to the PTS. So when you log in, they're there and waiting. But if you've done something in the last day or so, it's possible that may not carry over. Um, and anything, as I say, any progress, any levels, any gear that you get on the PTS won't come back either. Which kind of makes sense because you are technically playing a different game. However, they are mentioning there are a few specific issues that they know about and are working on, but they're putting the, the PTS up anyway. Um, and those are listed here. So we have trees around Dark Hollow Manor. So there we have the name of a location. Cool. When viewing Dark Hollow Manor for a distance, a large section of trees around the manor appears invisible. Okay, weird visual glitch. The Lost. When a lost engineer is decapitated, orange glass remains visible and attached to the body. I have no idea what any of that means context-wise, but I guess we're going to find out soon. Interesting. So they behave weirdly when you take the red off. Slumber Mill Hotel River. Water under the bridge near Slumber Mill Hotel will appear unmoving. Okay, so we've got a location called Slumber Mill Hotel, and there's a river next to it. Makes sense with it being a mill, I assume there's a water wheel and stuff as well. Sounds really cool. Neurological Warfare Door Prompt. When attempting to enter the boss event area during the waiting period, players will see a pop-up saying, Unlock requires terminal. Players will need to wait for the timer to run down to zero. Doesn't require a terminal, you just try and get in too early. So that sounds like it works along a similar way to, say, something like waiting for the debris to clear when you're going into a colossal problem to fight Earl, for example. So reward names like camp objects and outfits. All new camp out and outfit rewards, unlockable in dangerous pastimes and neurological warfare, should be considered temporary names. Final names will appear in the next update. Okay, that's fine. Neurological warfare, obviously we figured is some kind of event. Um, the million dollar question is, it's not mentioned up here as being available to engage with initially. Um, maybe that will be because it's not there until later. Maybe it is there and they just haven't talked about it. Definitely a question there. But uh, again, we'll soon see. Reward functionality. New camp rewards may display issues with destructibility in camps, tradeability with vendors and destructibility on drop, stashing in non-stash containers and or being unlocked prematurely in workshops. So reward items may not function properly with other objects for a while at least. Uh, reward preview and workshop menu. Thumbnails of new rewards may appear over zoomed when viewing them in the workshop menu. Wonder why that happens, but OK. Neurological Warfare, collision on balcony when waiting for Neurological Warfare to start in the robot testing waiting area. Okay, so there's uh, something to do with robots in there. Players can jump through part of a ceiling asset on the balcony uh, and shouldn't be able to. Lighting on the balcony while waiting for Neurological Warfare to start in the robot testing waiting area. Lighting may flicker to the west of the balcony. Okay, and the event image is a placeholder loading screen when joining event from the map. Okay. Dangerous Pastimes, that one is going to be there. Rewards Information. Dangerous Pastimes event has no potential rewards listed in the event information tooltip. So when you mouse over it on the map, little box pops up to tell you about it. It tells you what's there, a bit of information about the type of event, how difficult it is, how many players, and what sort of rewards are available. The, the rewards list is currently empty. That doesn't mean you won't get rewards. Not that it matters on the test server anyway, kind of. Um, but they're just not listed. Basically, just a visual glitch or visual thing that needs updating. 
And last but not least, there's a location called Camp Liberty. Hmm. I'm guessing kind of Pioneer Scouts-esque. Or some kind of camping type thing, you know, uh, as opposed to like a military camp. Well, we'll find out, won't we? Uh, graphical issues. Players may see enemies and environmental assets appearing in and out inconsistently when looking inside the main camp building. has been reported when viewing from the north or eastern sides. Okay, there we go. So some nine issues. However, getting back to the point, later tonight we're going to have a whole new area to explore and it's really going to be cool. Or at least I hope it's going to be cool. I'm definitely excited about it anyway. Um, as I say, new map update that is explorable and an expansion of the existing map and somewhere you can build camps, I would say has the potential to be the most significant thing happening since Wastelanders. Um, and there have been some pretty big updates, the whole Brotherhood of Steel questline edition and um, expeditions, things like that. And smaller things as well that have been good to have, like uh, you know, Nuka World and uh, the, the end game stuff they've added. But this is this is exciting. And I'm looking forward to exploring it later tonight and we'll see what happens there and I'll see if I can't get some fun footage of the thing for you and uh, have a little chatter about my experiences probably tomorrow. So yeah, um, I do have a new video coming. It's kind of aimed more at new players, but those of you who are not new players might find it interesting anyway if you're into the camp building side of things. Was going to aim that one for Saturday. Uh, it may get pushed till Monday now just because all of this has come up. But, uh, you know, we'll see. So yeah, things are happening. Um, what's going to be streaming Pacific Drive tonight for those who are into that really really cool game you should definitely check it out on the channel um, looking forward to diving back into that might do it tomorrow again might also have to push that to next week not sure at this moment in time for those who are interested in such things so yeah really excited about this can't wait to check it out um, if you're on PC yeah dive in check it out I expect I'll be seeing a lot of uh, content creators uh, <laughs> online this evening it usually happens that way so that's fun. Definitely looking forward to it. As I say, I'll be covering this. So uh, likes and subs if you found this interesting and you want to hear more about the update. Um, obviously, when it comes to story spoilers, if they are relevant, I'll be avoiding them for myself anyway, uh, as much as possible. But I'll try and avoid ruining anything for you. But I'll mark things with PTS um, and an icon on the uh, thumbnails if I possibly can. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that if you want to avoid anything being spoiled before it comes out, basically. Um, and yeah. So, as always, uh, like, subs, social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all that stuff down below. If you want to hit those buttons, check those things out. Join us for live streams. As I say, we're going to play in 76. We're playing uh, Little Pacific Drive that I mentioned. We're wrapping up with Enshrouded for the moment, probably early next week. And we'll see where we go from there, because there's a whole lot of cool stuff happening this year, games-wise. So, uh, yeah, a lot of fun stuff on the streaming side. So, join us for that as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.